Hi everyone and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. And although it is A-Level Biology, in this video we're going through exam technique and in particular spaced retrieval, which you can apply to any GCSE, any A-Level or whatever the exam is that you have coming up. So if you are new here, click subscribe and you won't miss out on any of the other future exam technique videos. So this is looking at the science of long-term memory and how you can use that to maximize the revision you plan to do. Now, if you're not interested in the science part behind this, I'll put the time cards on this video and you can skip straight to the bit where I go through the spaced retrieval planner, which you can create for your revision, which is also available for free on MissEstrick.com. Now, if you want to understand a bit more about how you create these long term memories and therefore why I give you the revision tracker that I do, then stick around and we're going to go through that first. So we're going to start with a little memory quiz. So first of all, can you remember what you learned in the first lesson of the day today, assuming you had a lesson today? Next question. Can you remember what you learned in the first lesson of the day two or three days ago? And finally, do you remember what you learnt in your lessons on Monday the 23rd of September 2019? And most common answers are yes, yes, no. And there is a scientific reason behind this and that's what I'm going to be going through in this video. Why it's easy to remember things in the short term but it's not always easy to remember information in the long term and I'll be showing you the tricks of how to make sure you can. So this all links to Herman Ebbinghaus's theory on forgetting and this forgetting curve. And he studied the human memory. And what he was looking at is, if you don't think about whatever the memory is, how quickly will you forget it? And this is demonstrating what he found. So if we think about something you learn at school, in that first day, you'll go from 100% memory, when you've just been told the fact, to within the space of an hour, you only have about 44% of that memory left. And if you jump ahead to six days later, you barely remember it at all. And if you are studying your GCSEs or A-levels, being told lots of new information every single day, and then your exam is two years later, that is not very good. So the reason that happens is the brain's unique properties. The brain is made up of 100 billion neurons and each neuron is connected to another neuron via a synapse, which is the name for the small gaps between them. And because of this vast number, that is what gives the brain its incredible storage strength and capacity to store information. And that network of neurons and synapses is called a neural pathway. And for you to be able to remember the stored information in your brain, that pathway has to remain intact. Now, when you have forgotten something, the information is still in your brain, but because the neural pathway is no longer intact, you cannot retrieve that information. And that's what we mean here by the fact that the brain has a very poor retrieval strength. So you struggle to remember information once that pathway has been severed. Now this links to one of my favourite films, Inside Out. If you haven't seen it, definitely go and watch it. And in Inside Out, you might remember if you have seen it, there are these janitor-like characters called forgetters who go round removing memory balls which haven't been thought about in a long period of time. And that models exactly what happens in the human memory. But instead of these janitor-like forgetters and memory balls, we have what are called glial cells in the brain, which go around cutting and severing these neural pathways. And instead of memory balls, memories are stored within these neural pathways. And what this means is, if you are not thinking about a memory for um, a long enough period of time, or frequently enough, the glial cells will sever that pathway so those neurons can be recycled and used to make a new memory. And this is so that your brain can maximise and prioritise the neurons use in the brain. So every time you go to sleep at night, this is what happens. Things that you think about frequently and look over a lot if we think about work will have strengthened neural pathways 
and it will reinforce that pathway. Things that you don't think about or maybe something that you learnt in the lessons that day or a week ago that you haven't looked at ever again since, the memories will be lost because the glial cells will cut that neural pathway because it'll assume it's not important, which is why you haven't revisited it. So while you sleep, that means when you wake up, if that pathway has been cut, you won't be able to retrieve that information. It'll still be stored in your brain, but you won't be able to retrieve it, which means you've forgotten the information. And if you have that happening for all of the information, when it comes to revise in the summer for your GCSEs and your A-levels, you will have to relearn all the information rather than if you had revisited throughout the year, just revising and strengthening the pathway. So the key then, how to overcome this forgetting is what we called spaced retrieval of information. And what that does is, we can see here the original red line of how quickly you forget information if you don't revisit or revise, look over the information. The green lines show you an alternative pathway. So if you did revisit even just once, you would now get this new green line. So you would remember it for at least a day to your full capacity. And six days later, you won't have forgotten quite as much. However, if day two, you looked at it again, you can see you would forget even less. If you looked at it again on day three, by day six, you've barely forgotten anything. So if you can try and incorporate weekly or even monthly reviews of what you've learnt in your lessons, it will really help to strengthen those neural pathways while you sleep. And what that means is it will build a really strong long-term memory. And therefore, by the time you do your exams in a year, two years, or even six months, you'll have a really strong long-term memory. And we can see that developing in the brain here. This is images of these neural pathways. And on the left, we can see images which show neural pathways that aren't connected. So all of these neurons would have the ability to store information. However, they're not connected, so you wouldn't be able to retrieve that information. But the more times you retrieve or revise the information, the more connections you get and the stronger this neural pathway. And that's what we can see here on the far right. These are images from a brain where someone has revisited the information repeatedly so they get this really strong neural pathway, or in other words, a strong long-term memory because they can retrieve that stored information easily. So that is why I've created this spaced revision tracker for you. The science shows that if you revisit the information five times, that is the ideal number to create this strong long-term memory. So I've done an example here for AQA A-level, for um, the AS, we've got biological molecules, cells, and then also topics three and four. So if you were revising for your AS, here are all the topics. And what you would then do is just tick off to make sure you have revisited five times before your mock, or you might want to change that to be your final AS exam or the A-level, or you might just slightly edit this for it to be a class test. And what that means is if you space out your retrieval and look at the content five times before the exam, you'll have really, really strengthened that neural pathway. And therefore, all of this information on biological molecules will be in your long term memory rather than if you did cramming, it would just be in your short term memory. And then within a week, you would have forgotten all and you'd have to do that every time before an exam. So it is a lot of effort and it is difficult to try and manage your time to fit this in for all of your subjects. But if you do, the payoff is so big. And this is how students manage to get A stars in the exams or grade nine in the exam, because they put the effort in from the start, not just cramming at the end. Now, five revisits sounds like a lot, but they don't have to be long periods of time revising. A revisit could just be doing one round using your flashcards. It could be doing one blurt activity. So have a look at my video on active recall and it'll just be picking one of those to do, which might only take 10 minutes. And that is how you can then incorporate the time. 
So have a go, download this, you can then edit it. I've done it as a Word document, so you can edit this and use it for whatever you want. And I hope you find that it does help you to organize your time better in the lead up to the mocks.